praise the Lord, the Lord is good. And his mercies endures forever. This is the call of God upon my life to come and warn this generation, this time that is fast ended, whether you believe it or not. One thing I've noticed about when God gives warning and people are aware of the warning, then after a while, you know, it seems to just fade as if it's not going to happen. And then sudden destruction comes upon those who just go by what they see when they should act in faith, the living God's word. If God spoke a word and you've confirmed it with the Holy Spirit, then you should expect that he will bring to manifestation what he has spoken so that you prepare and he doesn't meet you in the camp of the enemy. Because if the Lord has spoken to the children of Israel to go into their own tent, after putting the blood of the Lamb on their own doorpost and stay in the eating peacefully the lamb that was sacrificed, you know, then such of them will not have been caught in Egypt claiming they are visiting their friend, they are this and that, always having reason. They will always be excused not to obey God's word. You must understand that. Don't go as if, ah, it's this excuse, you know, like uh, King Saul, the rejected king, the first king of Israel that was rejected, who thought he had reason to go against God's command. It's not that the reasons will not be there. Romans 1.20, God says we are without excuse. There's no excuse that, that will, you can present to God that will excuse you away from the judgment of God. So I don't you just determine in your heart to obey God at all times. So I just thought let me come to share the reason why I'm here at this time. I've been on YouTube before for those who may be new. 2000 November 2014 for about three, three and a half years. And I deleted that YouTube channel after we were there with some a few others teaching holiness, preaching holiness, you know, in such a way that the Lord's hand was mighty upon me. Mighty, mighty, mighty upon me. And since then, up to the following seven years, even before then, the Lord used me to preach about, and I'm still preaching about. I still went out two days ago, and I still evangelized. Even though I was a bit quiet, I wasn't that, I was a bit quiet, and still did so. That is the command of God. For us, that we are without excuse. If God asks you why you never evangelize, what will you say? When the Lord says that these signs will follow those who believe in my name, they will go out and lay hands on the sick, the sick will recover. They will, you know, cast out demons and all this. If you truly believe, you won't be the ones they are casting demons out of. You will be the ones that you are in a grade that you are so much believing. Do you know what it is to believe, to be in Christ and to live in Christ to command and word? So that you are there and not just say, I believe. Your mouth cannot say something and your actions say another. Why you look for a prophet to deliver you? You should be out there preaching the gospel is my point. According to the word of God in Mark 16, 50 to 20, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. This is the relationship that God has allowed us to have while going into the world. We are not of the world, but God said, go ye into the world. This is how Apostle Paul too was sent to the world. Apostle Peter was sent to the ends of the earth. Apostle Paul was sent to the ends of the world because he had this kind of ruggedness. We know how it was, like almost like a Boko Haram before the Lord touch his life and move that spirit and the Lord poured his own spirit in Apostle Paul and if you see the description of 2 Corinthians 10 verse 1 it was described as and is still was in all his ministry gentle and humble I greet you in the name of the Lord that kind of humility but in his writing it's very bold very bold because the Holy Spirit now takes over you know, it's like whenever we are quieter, the Holy Spirit takes over our mind more to speak to us, to commune with us more. 
The Lord says in Psalm 46, 10, Be still and know that I am God. So when we are quiet, the Lord communicates with us more. That's why in the quietness of the night, when we are sleeping by dream, by night vision, the Lord visits us. The Lord revealed great and mighty truth to us. The Lord has revealed so much, so much to me and given me this mandate of Isaiah 58, 1-2 to, to go, shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day, they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right. And as not forsaking the commands of its God, hmm. they ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. This describes many of God's people, earthly Israelites. The children of the Messiah God are like Cushites to me. That's what the word of God says. That you are like Cushites. The Cushites are the Ethiopians today. So even in the scriptures, there is proof that you are like the people of um, Ethiopia. So don't be confused. There are scriptures to show that God knows who you are. And the Ethiopians are one of the oldest you know, generations of you know earthly children of God. So let me see that part when the law confounds that you are like the children of Kushites, meaning Ethiopians of today. Amos 9 7. And not you Israelites the same to me as the Kushites declares the Lord. The Lord being the Lord God, Jacob, Israel. Genesis 20, not 23, Genesis 27, 37. Jacob, Israel was made Lord over Esau, Edom. And Esau is the, all the braggado of this timeline that our own Lord Jacob, Israel is Lord over. So he's going down and we are coming up to be where our father is. So let us do the assignment of going out there to preach the gospel. And even as you are faithful in the little that God has given every one of us generally to go to the world and preach the gospel, not to go and be befriending them and marrying into them and all these things you do, James 4.4 4 will be against you because James 4.4 4 is in the scripture for a reason. You are not trust. You are not trust. What friendship do you have with the world you make yourself enemy of god by making yourself friends with the world you're supposed to go into the world and preach the gospel to them not go and sleep with them not go and fornicate not go and do all this sexual immoral that hebrews 12 14 to 16 wants you not to be profane or sexual immoral like esau if not as the Lord God manifests himself as Lord over Esau. All that like Esau, you like his artificial produce, fake hair, fake breast, fake bomb, fake hip, fake pregnancy, fake, fake, fake many things. You will go down with Esau for manifesting and, and, and bringing all those artificiality of Romans 1, 18 to 32. God Almighty told us in 1 John chapter 2, 15, to 17. Do not love the world, all the things of the world of Esau. All the things it produces. You have to ask the Holy Spirit. I have to ask the Holy Spirit. Lord, help me. Help me not to go and buy all these produce that are not glorifying you. Souvenir, gifts, things that are not even seen. Like I won't say it's nature. You go and buy it. You say you are buying painting. You are buying this. You want to put it on your wall. Many of us who say we are believers, who say we are Christians, who believe on the Lord Yeshua, we don't actually know the spiritual implication of what we do. I looked at a picture of a loved one recently, and what came out at me was, wow, was so negative, I had to, you know, act. Please, you don't know that 
the Lord is doing us favor by not opening our eyes because some people will run mad by the demons they have introduced into your own homes. By virtue of the fact that you put strange items into your house against Deuteronomy chapter 726. So again, I have this video to round up in 15 minutes. So this is one of the assignments to go and shout to the people of Israel, the people of Jacob in this timeline as we are with our Lord coming very soon, that God is saying, I should tell you of your sins and rebellion, not to crush you, but for you to repent, to return to your maker. Isaiah chapter 1, 18 to 20, if you return to your maker, humble and repentant from your heart, he's willing to wash away your sins and make you whiter than snow and make you pure, Holy as he puts his spirit within, within you, but you have to be willing and obedient for him to do what he wants to do with your life, not just now, but now and until you see him face to face. So, also in Revelation chapter 3, 15 to 20, this also end time congregation of God's people who call themselves church. You are still in Dan, you are still in body flesh. Synagogues are for flesh. Synagogue of Satan is who is, is flesh. Dan is partly what we just say the church is. It starts from, you know, the Roman, you know, seat of Satan in Revelation 16, 10 to 11. But then it extends to the Pharisee, their link. Just like Judas who linked himself to the Romans. Because of 30 pieces of silver, he refused to have his spiritual eyes opened to see how beautiful his mansion was in heaven. He went for physical, temporary, quick, quick, quick microwave pleasure, not being able to endure to see his home in heaven. So now, the word of God says, his appetition, no one will take. It will just be a signal to others that, ah, this beautiful mansion, somebody forfeited it for 30 pieces of silver. It's like a whole beautiful new build. And somebody wants to bless you with this million dollar, not even dollar, I don't believe in dollar that much as in pounds. I'll tell you the difference if the Lord permits me, but let me round this up. Pounds has to do with hearts. This is the heartland of the great United Kingdom of Judah. If you go upwards, so dollars that is for those dummy dollars of Revelation 18 to abode of demons, Babylon, America. So, yes, can you imagine somebody say they want to give you this instead of a house built with multi million claim money in pounds, house, mansion, but the, you should forfeit your mansion for just this hand claim. I say, ah, this hand cream is fine, you know, is this, you are saying you are so into it, instead of you to consider and think what you are losing for it. So, I'm going to round up. The other, you know, congregation that God is sending me to is his own people who are now into church, who were there as slaves, without clothes, with chains. We had no choice but to follow the so-called one who enslaved his own Lord's body, flesh enslaving body, and he thinks he will not pay for it. But God allow it to be because when this rod that is coming very suddenly is going to be poured out, it will be poured upon the one who has exalted himself there. Because no one who exalts himself that will not be brought down by the mighty rod of God. So Revelation 3, 15 to 20 is another congregation of the end time, you know, worldly ones who say they are serving the Lord, but they don't want to be holy, whom the Lord sent me to. Go and read it and let the Lord minister to you. My time is up. Once again, God bless you for listening. Shalom. The Lord is good. His mercies and just forever. Amen.